So this is your step-by-step -step guide to building a fly rod. So it is pretty straightforward. Only about eight steps, but we're gonna go through all those steps. So last week, that link up above, we talked about the tools and components. This week, we're gonna get it done. Build this fly rod up. We're gonna turn this pile of components into a fly rod. Before you dig too far into it, make sure you have that guide spacing chart I talked about last week. This is your like formula for building that fly rod. If you didn't get it when you bought your fly rod blank, go to that link below. I've, I've gathered up about four or five guide spacing charts in order to cover most of the fly rods that you might be building up. So I highly recommend you first test your tip top, right? So I got it, got my tip. You don't want this too loose. If it's too loose, it's gonna be all cockamamie, right? So this fits about right. Step one, finding the spine on your fly rod. Put the rod blank on my shoulder and I've got the butt section, largest diameter, down on a bench. And I will roll that on the table. You're gonna feel two different bumps, right? Or actually, it'll dip down. You wanna pick the major dip right there is mine. Pick that major dip. Now you're gonna see I left that in that position. Uh, and then you mark that position, the top of it, on the rod. This is gonna be the line, that inside bend is gonna be the line you're gonna put your guides on. Step two is mounting your reel seat. So you're gonna build up a masking tape bushing on the base of the rod, and then you're going to align your hood with the spine of the fly rod. All right, there it is. Our real seat fits on there. We're gonna remark the end because of all my rubbing. So that's just to remind me where to stop putting the glue on that little mark there. Step three is mounting your grip. So you're gonna ream this out with a file or a reaming tool to get it to slide into position over your reel seat. Right there is about as far as I'm gonna go. So I'm gonna take my drill, and I've got some different size files. There's reaming tools you can get as well. And we're going to ream out the inside of that grip. There's our spot right there. All right, so we've got the grip reamed to the size we want. Looks good. Let's do some marking and put our real seat on. So before we glue everything up, let's dry fit everything one more time. Mark a couple more things down, right? So we've got our grip. We've got our real seat, right? Got my finger holding it on the end there just to place it correctly. Let's put this on. All right. So we're gonna remember, we need to be below that line for applying our adhesive on this part of the blank. And then below that other mark we put for adhesive here. So step-by-step, step, first step is gluing on the real seat. Next step, would right after it, is gonna be putting on our grip. All right, you don't have to go crazy, but you don't want to miss anything here, right? The objective is to get a nice smooth coat on everything. All right, let's make sure we're covered good here. Not too crazy. So I put a quick little covering of masking tape on the threads.
Now is the time to wipe it up with that acetone that I mentioned. So remember we've got our marking on the blank itself. I'm gonna need my hood opening, this little opening in here, to align with my marking. All right, our reel seat is all set up. We're gonna dry fit our grip one more time. Make sure it'll go on nice, it does. Quickly mark the top of the grip. It's time to mix up some more epoxy. It's always good to have your acetone close by when you're doing this. You wanna keep everything nice and clean. So again, we're just gonna do a nice smooth coating from our mark down. All right, just to keep this good and strong, a little bit inside my hood, kind of turning it as I go, spreading it around nice. Be able to wipe that off nicely. All right, I'm liking how that's looking. All right, got my rag ready to go. Got a little bit of goo here. There it is, we're looking good. Let me see if my epoxy is still green enough to put my end cap on. I think so. All right, everything's glued up, it's setting up. Now is a good time to just take a little break, but before I do that, I'm gonna put a little bit of masking tape on everything to hold that end cap in place. Putting a little bit of pressure on there. Kind of putting some tension on it in order to hold everything together. All right, we're gonna set this out overnight. Step four, with your grip in place, you're going to attach your winding check. All right, so I think what we got is the most stressful part done. So we got our real seat is on, our end cap is on, our grip is on. Now it's time to put on our winding check. All right, before we glue everything together, let's do a little dry run. So that's the winding check right there. Where that goes, it's like a little finish piece that goes right on the rod right here. So let's slip this thing on. And that's what it looks like when it's on. So I'm gonna use a small little tool. It's a dowel. I just put a pin into it and clipped it off, the head off. And I use that to just dab a little bit of glue into that area. On. We're going to set this to the side. Step five is attaching your tip top. You want that glued into place, again, aligned with the spine of your fly rod. Tip top, remember, we've got to look for our, our marks. Back and forth, back and forth. Just going in. All right. Clean that off. Just got that cleaned off nicely. Now it's alignment. So I got my mark and I got my eye, just like that. With that in place, I'll put some tape on it. All right, so there it is beautifully lined up here to my mark. All right, let's set that to the side. Next, we get the fun stuff. We get to start wrapping some guides. Steps. 
six is measuring the placement of your guides from your guide spacing chart, taping them temporarily onto the rod, and then wrapping your guide onto the rod with thread. Okay, with our spine of the fly rod found and our measurement from the tip top to the position of our guide, let's place one of our guides onto the rod. So I got the guide right over the top of my mark. We're gonna get some bright colored thread to help out with this. I've prepped this, the feet of this guide already, wrap this around, and then use that same tape to start my wrap. All right, so we'll get that going, All right? Always can use your fingernail just a little bit to keep everything nice and tight. Start wrapping. Once you have about four or five wraps around, get your tag in, get your ra razor with a little bit of pressure. Cut that thread nice and close and keep wrapping. Now when I got about a sixteenth of an inch or so yet to go, so I'll grab my puller, drop that in, keep wrapping. All right, pull that off, cut through my loop, holding tension, pull that through, and then cut it nice and close. And there we have it, that's our guide wrap. So I hope you can see that a lot better than what I had before with that black on green. So I'm just moving that over just a little bit. I'm gonna get about a sixteenth of an inch from that end. I'm gonna wrap that up so that's gonna strengthen that little ferrule. All right, I'm liking that. Pull it off, hold your tension on that thread, snip, drop my tag in through my loop. Put some tension on that, cut it off, even those out a little bit, and that is our wrap. Step seven is putting the finish on your threads. You're gonna do that slowly using your drying motor. All right, so let's get into putting some finish on our rod. I've got my little syringes filled with my A and B components, but it's a 50-50 mix. All right, so nice thorough mixing. And then we're gonna use just that little tool, little nail with a blunted nail head in there with a dowel. So just a little dip in the finish. And then I just ever so slowly work it around that blank. With just a little kind of swirling action as it works around. Now there will be some little bubbles you can take those bubbles out as well. Just a quick little splash of flame over it, which we'll do here in a second. My finishing motor, all that's really holding the rod into it is rubber band. So I can slip that if I need to. Again, just taking your time, spreading that finish around. Yeah, I'm really liking that. 
Step eight is applying a little bit of flame over that finish to pop the little bubbles that you may have put in place and then maybe wiping up a little bit of stray finish with acetone. So if you see any little bubbles, a little lighter alcohol burner, flash it over there and they will basically pop. And now it's kind of inspection time, right? Okay, so we got two drying stands going. All of my guide wraps are finished. I've looked over everything. Are there some imperfections? Yes. Is this rod gonna work fantastic? Yes, it will. I'm not gonna worry about those little things right now. The key is to get a good coat of finish on those guides, make sure they're stuck on well, and then get out and fish this rod.